Bob Shambora from the United States uh, visiting South Africa. What brings you to our shores? A uh, whole number of things. There is a number of different technologies and different solutions that uh, my company has come across and we want to bring them here and make South Africa a better place. The world does not need a bunch of new technologies. The world needs solutions to problems. So one of the things that my firm does is we will uh, attract a number of different technologies and in many cases we'll integrate them. But we start from the back. It's almost like when you do a maze and you start from the finish and you work back to start. You find the problems that exist and you work backwards and to say, if I want to solve this problem, what is the solution set that's needed? And then you work backwards into what are the technologies that need to fit into the solution set? And then you find those technologies. And so because of the way we've done this, a number of different technologies have attracted to us. And so we are now finding solutions to problems that may include one or even seven different technologies that we found. And name me some of those wonderful things that you found. Um, some of my favorites are uh, in the field of water purification. There is a tremendous technology that's called electrocoagulation. The technology is actually 100 years old, but it has uh, now been refined to, to a very, very high order, where you can have large amounts of water that run through a reaction chamber, and the water is electrified, comes out the other side like a foam, and essentially what happens is the water pushes everything else away from it. Impurities. And so the water that's left over, you've Salt? got pure water. It, that particular technology is not good for, with desalination. Uh, the only thing that this technology does not work well with are things that are very highly water soluble. But for that, you have other technologies. So if your ambition is to remove salt, there are some other technologies that do that. But if your ambition is to remove 99.9% .9 of bacteria, viruses, particulate matter, um, chromium from the mining industry, um, radioisotopes at Fukushima, particulate matter, this is the technology. So that's one of the things. Something else that you've brought out? Uh, an affordable housing solution set. As a matter of fact, I've broken my own rule by, not calling, by calling it affordable housing. We actually refer to it as affordable homes because what people don't need, people don't need an affordable house. They need an affordable home. So what we have done, uh, and we've had quite a bit of fun doing it, is we have bundled a number of technologies together, a housing technology, uh, inexpensive energy storage, solar, LED, uh, a dry toilet that happens to be made right here in Cape Town. And you bundle that together, water purification at a small scale, and now for a very, very low price point, designed for the townships, you can have an affordable home. Neat, clean, off-grid. Uh, the, the structure of the house is actually an extruded plastic, like a corrugated plastic, but it folds together into beams. And uh, just think of uh, almost like a pizza box and how it would fold and clip together into beams. And then the beams are stacked upon each other and they're locked down. It's actually a very, very rigid structure. So not everybody would want to live in a house that's made out of plastic because I think that sounds, that's not as, as, as good. But the thing is you can build these in a day and you can give a lot of people a lot of clean, reliable shelter very fast. It's a humanitarian uh, effort. Haiti, mm -hmm. uh, I know people that are still building homes in Haiti and, and it'll never end. They'll, build, they'll, be, they'll be building homes for decades. But here's a way, if, if, even if you wanted a brick and mortar home, you could give these mm -hmm. people a solution of a shelter that is better than a tent. Yeah. Um, all right, just tease you for, with one more sure. that, that you brought out. What, what, what is that? Um, one I'm quite fond of is a, what they call a FOG technology. It's, FOG stands for fat, oil, and grease. And so we have a process to remove fat, oil, and grease from the water. And then the fat, oil, and grease can run through what we believe to be the world's first continuous flow process. And out the back end, you'll end up with biofuel, biodiesel, glycerin. So it's a twofer. How do you market this? Um, we find where it's needed. We find where there's a problem. So, you know, for example, in the United States, we come across a story where there's water being dumped into a, a bay and it's polluting the bay. The environmentalists are uh, reasonably upset about that. And then the bay decides, or the, the, the township decides, we're going to send this water two miles out into the ocean and dump it there. 
well, that's not a solution. So we'll approach them and say, we have a better idea. Listen to us. And, um, but what do you do with the impurities once you've got them? It depends what the impurities are. In many cases, the impurity is a fat, oil, and grease. And in that case, we use the second technology and we make it into fuel. Uh, that's, that's the best case scenario. In certain cases where if what you're removing is um, a radioisotope, mm -hmm. um, you want to get that to the least bit of volume as possible and basically stabilize it, seal it, and, and take care of it. Storage of energy <clears throat> is, is a vital thing, but you can't store electricity. So what kind of storage are we talking about? Storing electricity. I knew you were going to say that, which is why large, I think. Large-scale energy yeah. storage. The world really has not had a solution set until now. You can store it. Absolutely. So all these it, wind pumps that are annoying the countryside, the, 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 the fauna and flora and everything like that can be used and stored now? It could. It could. How? Well, th the biggest problem is there, people keep saying, what's the next big answer going to be? Everyone's looking for the next big answer. Is it going to be solar? Is it going to be water? What is it? Um, is it wind? And the answer is, it's probably going to be a combination of all those things. But the mm. biggest problem we have, if you think of fossil fuels, it's already energy storage. When you drive around with petrol in your tank, that is, store, that is energy that you're, you're driving around with as you, as you need it. Liquid energy. Liquid energy. It's, but there, you there's there's but potential it. energy in there. So there are now processes where you can store very, very large amounts of power, uh, lithium polymer battery arrays that are quite safe. It's a, a number of lithium polymer cells that are all bundled together mm. and they can be put in a shipping container like a, on the back of a truck. And uh, I would encourage you to not think of the amount of battery storage to back up a whole town. Mm. Think of the amount of battery storage you need to back up your office or your house. Because something like that is the size of a small air conditioner unit. Ah. And so when your power goes out for four hours, that can kick on, you've got your energy storage, and, and that in itself is grid stabilizing. The average wind farm on the planet collects and distributes 42% 40, of its potential power. Yes. 58% is wasted. If you could store the power and release it to the grid when you wanted to, wanted to and even where you wanted to, now you've got something. 